Welcome, Fritz, to London. Uh, pleased to have you back. Uh, we're here last uh, in 2012 to give the annual lecture. Um, what has changed in Germany since then? I mean, we read that the green energy tr uh, transition is finished. Is finished. Uh, we had a, a former Secretary of State saying uh, there was no energy generated for a few weeks this winter, so therefore the Energiewende is okay. kaputt. Not so quick, not so fast, Benny. I think the system is much more resilient as we thought. Um, the first part of the Energiewende that was closing down the nuclear plants, 30% of the power, um, and uh, now we have the second part, that means also to get rid of coal. And um, until now, um, we see uh, that, that coal is the backup for the energy band. If we would not have lignite and coal, it, was it would be plunging uh, immediately. Um, we have other uh, reasons uh, that uh, we are not in, in really serious problems. We have eight, nine neighbors, neighbor countries, where we can put the overcapacity when wind is too much there as waste energy to Poland, to Switzerland, uh, whatever. Um, and um, we have this, uh, as a third reason that it is working, uh, that we have a grid which is really over-engineered uh, by German engineers, you know, they, they are very uh, uh, carefully looking that nothing uh, goes wrong. And from that point, we are profiting on these, these uh, old uh, in engineering tradition. But every year, the renewable is mounting. Uh, we see that the problems are lurking behind the corner. And I, I think in the next two to five years, we will see whether we are really in a dead end. Okay, so the lights are still on. Um, electricity is still generated. Um, most of the nuclear power plants have been shut down. Um, I, my understanding is still 40% of electricity is generated by coal, but this is now supposedly being phased out. Um, the whole thing costs about 25 billion a year, but CO2 emissions are rising. What's, something isn't going the right direction. So you spend like crazy, but CO2 emissions are going up. How, how is that possible? Uh, that is um, coming out of the system uh, of the Renewable Act. The wind and solar power uh, is going to the exchange for, z for zero. So, and it, it uh, is required that uh, it comes first. So. 30% of the power is, uh, is going to the exchange and shifting all other productions like uh, hard coal, gas, out of the market. And uh, these, the cost are 25 billions for the renewables, uh, but uh, they shift away the production of gas and hard coal, which is a little bit lower than lignite. So uh, the effect is not a CO2 reduction. So that is a... So are you saying the direct effect of prioritizing renewables makes coal actually more competitive? makes the uh, a cheap coal more competitive and the cheaper coal is the lignite and uh, uh, some uh, newer uh, coal plants and, 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 and gas is, has no chance in that scheme and gas is a little bit uh, uh, lower in their CO2 emission. That is a contradictory in itself. Um, therefore you see we are stable in emissions. We are also stable in, 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 in consumption of electricity have been not reduced 
uh, that was a target of the of the uh, government, uh, minus 20 percent until 2020. They will never achieve that, and they will also never achieve uh, minus 25 percent in 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 CO2. Right. So every household in Germany now has to pay roughly 300 euros per year yes. to subsidize the wealthy landowners and the farmers and the people with big houses who invest in renewables. But there doesn't seem to be any real outrage about it. Yes, uh, that is uh, interesting to see. But I think uh, this is covered up by the very good economic situation uh, in which uh, Germany is. Uh, in, in other circumstances, that uh, would be a, a totally different picture uh, to, to have an additional load on, on households, not only on households, but also on enterprises. Uh, uh, beside the uh, steel and, and aluminia production, which is a relief from the renewable levy, that is uh, the, the extra load by the renewable law is double of the uh, exchange price. It is, uh, it's, it's a heavy load, but uh, the population, I think, and the households, um, they have been told uh, you have to pay this to save the world. And, and, and uh, one of the reasons that uh, there is a, a little bit complacency in, in, in that respect is that government achieved that uh, um, uh, people in Germany has a, has a bad conscience and said, okay, we have done uh, wrong things, we have to do now a little bit an, 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 an extra uh, uh, a burden to help the world. That, uh, that is, is only working in good times and we are in good times in Germany. Right. And um, so there is very little party political opposition. There is uh, no party uh, political opposition in the parliament, none. But I understand that there is growing uh, local uh, opposition to some of the projects of the energy vendor. Yes. And where does that come from? That is interesting to see that the opposition is also coming from the uh, outer parliamentary uh, uh, movement that was in, in the 70s with the nuclear. Uh, there was also unanimous support in the, in the parliament for nuclear and now we have unanimous support for wind and solar. Uh, but uh, you see in the rural areas uh, we, we see uh, that uh, the people are saying uh, the, the, the urban elites uh, are uh, realizing their dreams of a sustainable uh, electricity, energy, uh, on the loss of our homeland, on the destroy, and they they see the uh, uh, that that their surrounding is destroyed, and there are uh, 800 initiatives fighting against new wind farms, which are now placed more and more. Um, in, in the near of uh, urban areas on the one hand because they need space. That is the problem for renewables. They need a lot of space. And the second is they are going now into forests, into very sensible areas where a bird uh, is, is now endangered and therefore is a huge resistance. It is coming from the n a natural movement. So it is very interesting. There is a new green movement against the, the, the green uh, price, the political price of saying we have to do this, we have to destroy the German nature to help the earth. And, and I'm, I'm quite uh, sure that uh, this is the most decisive point in, a, in, in the next five years and that movement will come to parliament in, 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 in different parties. In the Liberals or uh, the AFD, whatever, will come to the Parliament and will uh, speak out uh, what happens uh, in, in reality in the rural areas. And uh, tell me a little bit about the, these divisions among the 
um, conservationist movement in Germany. So you have the big green NGOs who are all campaigning for renewable energy, and then you have conservationists who are concerned about the negative impact of these projects on the environment, on, on um, wildlife. You yourself are chairman of a wildlife foundation. How do you deal with this division within the environmental movement? So what we see is that um, we, we don't see any um, implication until now by um, climate change. But what we see is that uh, biodiversity is, is really destroyed by the measures uh, against climate change. So uh, we, we see uh, that, uh, for instance, uh, uh, very important birds of prey like uh, the red, ki uh, red kite we have investigated as foundation this, uh, uh, is really endangered by uh, wind farms. We have uh, uh, 1,000 sacrifices per, per year and uh, we have only uh, 12,000, uh, 14,000 in, 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 in Germany. So uh, it is foreseeable that in 10 to 15 years uh, we, we, uh, he's not there. And and, and therefore, uh, we have the, the Green Movement has a, a big problem. The Green Party has decided to go f that way, uh, whatever uh, it costs, whatever in nature it costs. And, and therefore, you see now that the, the, the natural um, uh, organization, the nature organizations, uh, are splitting. They are splitting. Uh, one who are supporting the, let's say, the official political view, we have to save the world, uh, and even if we have to destroy our own nature. Um, and there are more and more stepping out of this movement and say we, we, we are uh, creating new forms of uh, initiatives, even new organizations have been founded. Uh, uh, who say, uh, no, nature uh, um, uh, conservation is our first target and uh, all other targets have to be in a, in a second row where the official green line is totally Well, different. it's very interesting to hear about these splits and divisions because obviously Germany always has a kind of trailblazing tradition in environmental policy yes. making and, and thinking and so on. So uh, do you think that with the growing number of renewable energy projects, and we're talking about wind farms, solar farms, biofuels, deforestation for biofuels, uh, uh, wood pellets, and uh, all sorts of big projects that have a strong impact on the environment, do you see that this division will actually um, happen in other parts of the world? Um, I, I think we, we um, in that way, we are also really the vanguard because we are very developed in that uh, sense. Um, uh, on the other hand, we have a very romantic and nature-orientated uh, tradition in Germany. So I don't know what, uh, how uh, France and, and UK and others are looking at this, but if you imagine um, um, that to fulfill the targets of the Energiewende in Germany, to build uh, 55,000 wind turbines, and if you spread it uh, over the country, then you have every 2.7 kilometer a turbine, and then you can imagine that you are totally uh, shifting the landscape, that you uh, uh, destroying uh, nature which, which needs these landscape. And, and, and uh, we know that uh, with, uh, our investigations say uh, that, that uh, turbines are now killing 240,000 bats because the bats are uh, living in, in a forest and, and, and uh, the wind turbine needs a, a street to, to uh, its point through the forest and, and the bats are flying 
through the free space to the turbine. So they are attracted by the turbine. And they are clever animals. They see the rotors by, by, by their radar system. And they are going through the, radar, the, through the rotors. But what they don't, don't know is that behind the rotor there is a, 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 a low pressure and the low pressure bursts their lungs and they are, uh, uh, then, uh, ki uh, uh, are killed. And, and, and that is something uh, which is by law forbidden. You cannot place something where you systematically kill uh, endangered species. The policy is looking away of that, but the people more and more hint on that. And therefore I think that is really the most important thing to change the way of energy policy in Germany. Not the cost, maybe the stability of the grid, which is also something which really every person is... is, is um, Concerned. concerned about, uh, but the, the, the nature uh, is, is, an, uh, is a thing which uh, at the end is underestimated by the government. And how do you explain the either silence or even ignorance of the green NGOs when it comes to manifest destruction of environments and animals? But honestly speaking, uh, the Green Party has never been a really natural conservation party. Never. It was from the very beginning a left party who need um, a green cloak, uh, a camouflage. Uh, their target was to, to change society, to transform it, and uh, they needed a good argument for that. And the best argument they could found is if you don't uh, uh, fight against industry, against uh, technology, against capitalism, we will burn the world. And this message went to the brains of of the people and that, that, that reach the people. They have, uh, they believe them that that is true because that is the main cause for all these energy vendors. What is it? Why are we doing such silly things to pay for wind farms if they are not able to, to, to bring the electricity into the grid because the grid is full, because there is too much wind in that area we pay for it. We pay for something which has never been produced. That is silly. But why do they this? We do this because there is such a, a, a big um, motion uh, behind that, and that is the climate, the the, the uh, climate catastrophe which is which we are expecting. That is the driver of all that uh, things, and and therefore. Um, the green have no uh, sensors for the n natural uh, scene. They are not, that's not really uh, uh, their, their thing. Right. And if they are so concerned about the climate, uh, as you say, yeah. that's which is maybe. something perhaps yeah. also questionable, why are they against nuclear energy? Because yeah. you could argue if you really want to decarbonize, the best way of decarbonizing is to build nuclear power plants. So yes. th th that doesn't add up. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Uh, the, the beginning of the, the, the movement of the Greens was the, the, the uh, fight against nuclear. Uh, uh, also nuclear, not only nuclear power, but also an, uh, nuclear well. arms. And, and, and that is the same source where we came out. And, and therefore you're right, that is a contradiction. I, I cannot explain because you are right. Uh, uh, it, it was very silly to step out of uh, a nuclear because uh, after Fukush Fukushima uh, uh, we were the, the, the only country who stepped out within a, a week. Uh, and even you look to Japan where the failure has been made, 
uh, they are already again in and no other country followed us. Um, and and, and to, to, to think that you can uh, substitute uh, a cheap and CO2-free energy by intermittent um, expensive uh, energy, that is one of uh, the silly things of the German Energiewende. Uh, it uh, was uh, the, the, the government Schröder who has said, okay, 2032, we, won't f we will fall out. So we had then from 25 years to really make a prudent step to a new energy system. But what we are doing now is really uh, um, a, a very uh, a bumping road which we, which, we, which we cross. In Germany, there are about a million families yeah. okay. that are benefiting directly uh, from the transition, in either because they own land uh, or they are farmers or they have solar panels on their uh, houses. Um, these are the wealthiest families and the most influential families in Germany. Yeah. Is there any scenario where realism comes back yeah. and the government actually says, hold on, perhaps this is not yeah. the best for our nation? You are right, there are huge vested interest. For a turbine, you receive 75,000 euro per year and that 20 years for Just 20 for years. the piece of land. Just for the piece of land. And you are also right, uh, it is a social transfer from uh, the uh, working class and the, the, the lower, uh, uh, the, the poor people to the rich, because the poor people have to pay it and they have no land and they have no roof to profit from that. That is something uh, which happens already, but it leads not to an implosion of the system. I think uh, the system uh, has uh, three challenges. The first is, will climate uh, change really happen in that way that what our uh, IPCC has uh, uh, told us? What is in the next 10 years if uh, temperature uh, is not going up? Then the people will doubt for 30 years, uh, you are wrong. Why should you right, be right for the next 100 years? The second is um, the stability of the grid is more and more in, in danger. Uh, if you have uh, only a blackout for two or uh, one day, that is a huge disaster. And the third, I think, is really the destruction of nature in Germany. That is a growing concern. And if you steal the Germans, their forest, you should not underestimate the power which can grow out of this uh, mood. Fritz, thank you very much. You will give, obviously, your talk tonight in the House of Commons. And we're all looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Benny.